stuff, guys. Okay, welcome back, guys, to coffee, although now we have cranberry juice. And we're on Trippy. Hi, say hi to Trippy. <laughs> say hi, everybody. <laughs> so I'm on my desk. So I'm going to back up here. So this is where I work. I got, let's move the cord out of the way. So you guys are up on a platform right there. Then here's where I'm working all the time. Here are my, here's my pencil shavings. I, this is what I sharpen my pencils in. Um, here's the paints I'm using all the time. I'm going to try to do this camera thing as nice and focused as I can, guys. So there's all my paint that I use all the time. However, now I'm going to move you guys. Hang on. We're coming around over here. Here's my other paint carts. So I have paint here and paint there and all over there. All right, coming back around. But these are all the paint colors that I use. Like, you know, excuse the squeaky chair, but it is what it is. These are all the paints that I use. And they're just Americana craft paint. When I do my collage and color booking and all that. All right, let's straighten up little Trippy's head. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So, let me just show you how it looks here. So, that light right there is off right now. But I have that light, this light, that light, and this one. I'll have to turn this one on too. So, we've got light. So, I have all these like, plusy overhead lights. So, I have lights all around me so it's nice and bright and hot. So, on my desk, besides the paint this is what I want to do the video on is what's in my totes that's what this video is going to be what's in my totes plus I have here's why all my pencils that I use every on my daily basis okay that's not all and this is just the ones that I'm using like currently and then here's my other pencil um, pull out tray right here all my brushes are right there brushes brushes and then I have my pencil cases here which I'll show you that too I just want to kind of show you how I have it set up so if I need other pencils I can reach right here right there right here right here you know and all then right here so I just want to show you what it looks like so that because I'm gonna set trippy down and not move them oh, not move them around while we're we're showing things so, yeah, so let's do what's in my totes. <laughs> let's try to straighten up Trippy. You're on a little tripod here. Trippy the tripod. And I'm going to try to, um, you know, kind of get everything as close to us as we can. So I have two totes here. One is like a, just a cheap, flexible one. This one right here. Let me just get reaching over, guys. So this one is just one of those, I think it's Michael's, it was $4.99 for this bag, okay? So it was just like $4.99 at Michael's, and it's not expensive at all, and it came with this roll, or I don't know if it came with the roll, but you'd buy this at Michael's too. If it didn't come with it, I think it's the same Artist Loft, it's the same Artist Loft brand of roll. If you have any questions, put it in caps, and... If you're watching the recording, I'm just doing a little desk tour. Let's call it a desk tour because it's not just in my totes, but I don't know. Desk and tote tour? Okay. So anyway, so in this tote right, and in, in this little roll right here are our luminance. These were gifted to me by Eileen, the enabler elf, and these are the only luminance I have. They're beautiful, lovely, wonderful pencils. But I can't. I don't have enough colors to like do portraiture with them, so I don't really use them a lot. But trust me, they're wonderful pencils, but they're not cheap. So if you do a lot of portrait work and stuff, um, and stuff, <laughs> they are kind of expensive. So just FYI. So that's why they are in the little roll up tote, uh, little roll up thing here. Never. You have that one from Michaels and didn't come. Okay, so it doesn't come with it. Okay, so you buy this separately then. Okay, so and it has a little elastic around it. And uh, thanks, Jean. So I guess this is separate. But I think I got this as an artist loft one too that I got at Michaels. Okay. All right, so 
first up in this tote, and I'm going to turn it on the side so you can see, as long as I don't be bumping into Trippy here and not have a big flash of light in your face. So what I have in here are my Prismacolor pencils that I use all the time, including these. Okay, so these right here are the pencils, on, and these are just in a silverware tray. So these are the pencils that I use every day for color booking. And I have them divided out by like neutrals, oranges and reds, pinks, purples, blues and greens, more neutrals over here. It's just a silverware tray. So these are, when you hear me rummaging around pencils, this is what you hear. However, those are just part of the pencils, but those are just the ones I use the most. But in the tote here, in the tote are the rest of my Prismacolors. And how I keep them is uh, in, um, in bundles by color. If you have any questions, just ask because I'm going to kind of just keep rolling along. So these are like my uh, flesh tones and yellows. Okay. And then like here's light greens, dark greens and blues, light blues, grays, reds, oranges. Oh, so you can't really see. So I have all the pencils in bundles. Here's pinks, purples. So these are the rest of the sets that ha I have that are in the uh, silver wire tray here. But with this in here, I also have um, the bulk of my, these are just my Crayola markers. The Crayola bullet tip markers are underneath the pencil. So here's the pencils up here. I got some other ones over here on this side. I'm going to show you in a minute. But <clears throat> right here are all my Prisma colors, and then here are my Crayola markers, the Crayola bullet tip, you know, super tips. And then I have a new set of them in here. So these are the exact same things that are here. But then these I can just carry from room to room. These are the newest ones. But I'll use whatever. I'll just pull from these, right? I'll just pull from them. And they're all bundled by rubber bands. So if I need a yellow, I can either pull it out one by one, or I can just pull out the whole bundle of yellows like that okay and then just slide them back in except you want to make sure the lids stay on <laughs> cap them well so then I just can stick them back in like that okay so then also in here I have my Varathins these are the old timey Varathins from I don't know how long ago Vonnie and I traded um, she, doesn't use, she didn't use Varathins, and I didn't use oil pastels. So I sent her all my pa oil pastels, and she sent me all her old Varathins. And they're the old ones with the metal ends on them like this. So, yeah, so these were all gifted to me by Bonnie. Uh, well, traded, I should say. We did a trade. So I have all my Varathins, and I just put them in here by, like, the ends like this so I can see them. Because then I know that those are all my Varathins. Um, the other pencils that I have in here, I'm going to try to keep this where you can see it. Other than all my Prismacolors in here, I also have my Faber-Castell, wait, wait, they're not Polychromos, yeah, these are the Polychromos. These are all the Polychromos I have. Polychromos, Chromos, yeah. So these are the only colors, I have one set of those, like the basic colors. And uh, I think I bought a few, I might have a black, white, and some grays in one of my pencil cases. But these are all the colors I have of the polychromos. Again, I love them, but they're, they're kind of expensive. Uh, you know, it's harder to buy these in full sets because they're more expensive. Uh, not that the Prisma colors are that cheap, but I'm so used to using Prisma colors from back when they were Barrel, Sanford, Premier. And so I'm just used to them. I'm used to the softness and blendability of the Prisma color. So those are just my favorite ones to use. But, you know, it's, it kind of depends on what you get used to. If you start out with polychromos and then you, you picked up some Prisma colors, you'd probably go, oh, no, I got to stick with the polychromos, you know. So it's just because for, you know, 30 whatever years I've been using um, Prisma color that I'm just used to them. Let me take a sip of juice, guys. Okay. So, just I'm trying to read chat. It's kind of far away. 
So there's those. Then I also have in here, and I keep them all bundled up by bundles. I have a few of the Derwent Artist pencils. And again, I have them by bundle here. I think these are all the Derwent ones. Okay, so these are the Derwent Artist ones. Now, I've used these for, I use them for a while trying to really love them. But to me, they're kind of scratchy. Okay, um, they just feel, they and certain colors are scratchier than others. But I do have a nice set of them, as you can see. And again, I bundle all my uh, pencils, markers, you know, everything up by color. Family like this, like the blues, the greens, the purples and pinks, the browns, and then the oranges and yellows, like that. So anyway, I do really like these. I like the color uh, colors that they have. They have cool colors, but they just feel a little scratchy. I'm, maybe I'm just spoiled with the softness of the of the Prismacolor. I don't know. So that's all that I have in here. And again, my Prismacolors that I have, like in these bundles here, they're part of the ones that I use every day here in the silverware drawer tray thing. So, and everything's real handy. I try to keep everything like within arm's reach so that I'm not digging around for things. So, let me put these back in here. And I have these facing forward so I knew the difference. So those, the, the dirt, I mean the uh, uh, Derwent's face forward, the Polychromos face that way. Same thing for the same thing for the Prismacolor and then the markers. So that's how, that's in this tote. This is in my like basic stuff. This is not anything really special other than my Verithins, my Bonnie Verithins. This is just all stuff that you know I'm constantly using all the time. Again, and these are another set. These bullet um, super tip Crayolas that, that you get, they're in the kids section of Michael's or Hobby Lobby. And they last a long, long time. They last a long time. But not only that, because of the tips, you can get fat, wide marks. You can get wide marks, and you can get all the way to a thin line like that. Now, these are water, water-based markers. They're not watercolor markers, which I'm going to show you my uh, watercolor markers. Um, the Kurataki Zig Real Brush Clean br clean Color Markers. They're real watercolors. These are just the kids' kids uh, markers. Hey, Fee. Good to see you. And uh, so anyway, the, these are great for color books. This was what, what I was trying to get at. They're not, they're not going to blend like watercolor markers. Like true watercolor markers are not going to blend like that, but they're great for just your color books. Okay, so that's what's in this tote, and then this just sits on top of it, on top of. Oh yeah, let me put these back in here. I just have these in here because I wick. I know that they're in there. I usually have them on the side here. Hang on, guys. I usually don't take everything out at once it's like this. So again, this tote has all kinds of pockets and everything. This one I don't, it's real, it's real like jello-like. <laughs> it's just a flexible bag, so I don't put anything in these pockets. This one just sits on top of this tote, which is what I'm going to bring over here next. So this just sits on top of that one. So let me just slide this out of the way or put it on the floor for a minute. So I have some space to show you the next one. Okay, so I'm trying not to, you know. Okay, so in this tote, this is the tote that has a little bit of everything. Okay, it might take me a minute here. Let <laughs> me get situated. Hang on, guys. Sorry, I'm not trying to get y'all dizzy or anything. So this is a scrapbook tote that I used to use a lot for when I'd go on scrapbook um, uh, crops and retreats and things. This was the tote that I used all the time. 
I got it at Archiver some years ago, and they were like 40 bucks. Of course, I always use coupons and every on everything, and uh, so I got all kinds of little keychains and little lanyards and all kinds of things. I don't put anything much on this. I think I have a old, let's see, I got a couple of markers in there. But th I don't put anything on this side because I want it to lie flat on my table. If you all have any questions, just ask, guys, because I got a lot of pencils and pens to show you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, that tote is happiness. Yes, it is. And so it, around the edges, I have things in the po side pockets. This tote's very sturdy. It's very, it's like real thick, thick cardboard. It's not flexible like the other one. It's got nice, um, sturdy, hard plastic uh, pockets that divide it. And it's just a better quality, obviously. Um, but, you know, it's just sitting here on my desk. So anyway, there's nothing on in these pockets because that's I wanted to sit flat on my desk. But I do have things around all the sides, um, pins and um, markers and all kinds of things that I'll show you here in a second. Now these are kind of like I want to I don't I don't know how to explain because I have kind of a weird way of uh, how I keep all my pins and pencils and and um, <laughs> I have lots of little lots of little things like these that I have st special things that I use for different things. So I'll show you my little pencil holders too in a little while and um, I'll just just keep going here. Okay, so I'm going to turn this on its side. So in here, <laughs> I'm not going to take out every single pencil, but I'll tell you the by bundle, you know, by bundle. So up here, first I have just the, a cheap set of gel pens. I think they're Michaels, Michaels or Hobby Lobby. And again, I got these specifically just for color books, just for the tiny little areas, you know, those little bitty things that you can't even get in with a pencil, you know, where you need really just need a pen to get in there, you know. <clears throat> so that's just a cheap, I mean, I think this, this set right here was probably, you know, $4.99 something like that just the cheap um, cheap uh, gel pens okay then I have all kinds of the big uh, the the crystal big crystal I think y'all they're called um, what do you call them biros in in UK so I've got all kinds of, of sizes um, this is a papermate brand these are the big brand and then I have the there's the thicker ones and the thinner ones but I always try to stock up a little bit on these uh, during school supplies. When school supplies come out, now that one right there, I'm not sure what this one's doing in here. This one right here is one of the gel pens. And I keep them by bundle because it's easy to get at, the whole thing. We're weird about different cases. I know, right? That's why I'm showing you how I keep mine. Because you, oh, wait, you haven't seen. This is just the totes right here. So these are just wait. So, but I do have them uh, bundled up by the 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 thick of the you know one's a bold and one's a thin regular big biro, and then the other one is the uh, paper made pins. So they're all essentially the same thing. Ballpoint pins. Oh, did I get it? Here's another one. I got two. All right, somehow I pulled these. <laughs> they all go back in here. They're mixed up. They have to go back with their family. Okay, there we go. So, yeah. So, those, I get these all the time uh, when school starts. And split, that, that's when you want to get those. Um, then I have the high, some Sharpie highlighters. Okay, so these, I love these because if you ever do sketches, if you ever draw just sketching, these are quick ways to color your sketches in a bold, fun, creative way. So let's just say you're, you know, you whatever you draw, you know, whatever you draw, and you just want a quick wash of, you know, color over that, that, um, let's say you just draw a girl and you want a quick blonde hair, you, you know, you can get quick blonde hair with a highlighter or whatever, you know, or just, just a wash of color or background or an outline. Anyway, they're the, you know, the, the fluorescent colors, and because they're, they're highlighters. And I like these. I don't know if they still sell these anymore. I got these a couple years ago. They have the key ring chain thing on them. They, you know, they're made for students to hang their, you know, key chains on them. 
So I really like it for that, but especially like because of the colors. I mean, they're just some awesome, beautiful colors for highlighters. Orange, fluorescent pink, hot pink, blue, dark blue, green, purple, magenta. So I love these highlighters. Then I just have some Crayola, Crayola pencils. Uh, no, th this one's Rose Art, and I think this one's Crayola. These are the fluorescents. Again, I haven't used these a lot. One of y'all gifted these to me, and I just haven't used them much, but I need to because I love fluorescent colors on certain things. So I got the Crayola fluorescent colors. I hope the color. I hope everything's showing up okay. Am I? I know it's not. I don't have the autofocus on, so I don't want it zooming in and out on you. So anyway, so that's what I got in there. And then these are, I had these forever. And they're the, um, the color pencils. They're the Progresso brand. I think General makes them. Uh, maybe, they, maybe they're maybe they made by the same company, Progresso and General. Um, but they're the woodless, they're not woodless graphite, but they're like just like the woodless graphite. They're woodless color pencils. And again, I love the colors in these, but they're scratchy. They have beautiful colors, but they're but they're scratchy, you know. So I have them in a bag because I took them somewhere one time, and they'll they'll break kind of easy. You can't drop these. They'll, I mean, because it's like plastic coated. You drop them and they crack. I mean, they're broken in half. So, um, but they they're just kind of scratchy, but they are they have beautiful colors to them, and they're they're not real cheap, but they weren't real expensive. But I love the Progresso and the General Woodless Graphites, which I have a few, of, you know, I, I used to draw all the time on camera with those before I started drawing with white on craft paper for you guys. I would draw with the Woodless Graphite because it would show up on camera. Nice, thick, bold lines, right? But anyway, so that's what those are. So let's put those back in here. And then my gel pens on top. Because those these are the ones I'm using the most out of this little pocket right here. It's the gel pens with the colors. And this side I just have some glue sticks and some uh, uh Yoohoo glue sticks, some notepads, and because remember, you know, if I go to Denise's, this is more like the tote that I would take if I was going to stay for any length of time. Now I just have littler pencil cases that I take, but this, I used to take this tote to her house all the time. Uh, so I have all kinds of little pen, uh, little pads of paper and stuff in there. Okay, let me get a sip of juice, guys. Okay. Down here on the next row, I hope this is fun for you guys. I love seeing people's. When Paula showed her tote a few months ago, it was like I was just sitting there. I couldn't even blink, you know. And uh, she's shown it a couple times, but it's been a while. Paula needs, Paula, you need to show your tote again. Yours doesn't look like this at the moment. <laughs> uh, oh, you tweeted beside your couch? Did you just tweet a picture, Paula? Is that what you're saying? Okay, hang on, let me look. Let me look, Paula. Did she just tweet a picture? I'm looking. No, no, Paula, no tweet. No tweet, Paula. <laughs> but anyway, Paula has this exact scrapbook case. I mean, tote. I think it's the exact same one. If not, it's darn near close. So... Okay, so then in this one, now some of these pencils I have had forever, like these. These pencils are probably 30 years old. I'm not kidding. They're the Derwent, and it has England on it. The England Rexel Derwent watercolor pencils. These are the first watercolor pencils I ever had, and as far as I know, these are the only watercolor pencils that were around. These were the only watercolor pencils that I knew existed, 30 years ago. <laughs> so anyway, I've used some, and I've used some more than others, you can see. But they have awesome colors. And they still work just as good as ever. 
But you know, we move on to the Neo Color 2s, the Ink Tents, the, you know, you know how we are. <laughs> yes, these are vintage. I mean, they literally say on the front of them, look, England. And see, it's L-O-U-R. Because I think they're made in the U.K. Isn't it Derwent at U.K. company? So anyway, well, it says England on them. I guess so. So these are really, really old. Okay, I, I keep thinking that Paula's tweeting me pictures of her tote. But it's probably not Paula tweeting me at all. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 say, Jean tweeted it. Okay, so here is Paula's. I'm going to show this. I hope it'll show. No, I don't think it's going to. Hang on, guys. Let me see if I can get it sideways and big. So here's beside Paula's couch. There's one tote. Here's her other tote. So see what I mean? Paula needs to do. Paula, we need to. You need a tour of this tonight. We need stream. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so those are the the vintage uh, watercolor pencils. Then, I'm trying to remember. Okay, these are my original ink tints, okay? These are my original 24 ink tints with one, I think there's two. Okay, I have a couple Aquatone, Derwent Aquatones in here. And they're kind of like, I mean, I could, these would snap if I bent them. But again, I only had a few of these. I never bought a full set of these. But they're the Derwent Aquatone, and I have a black, a brown, a red, a few of these. And again, they're water-soluble, like a crayon pencil thing. But these were my original ink tints, and I did like them, and I still like my ink tints, because I have a whole set of them. <laughs> Let me show you the ten here. So up on the shelf, so I do have a set of 72 of them. So I guess I better like them, right? And uh, I just don't use them enough. I used them uh, recently on, let me get the page, I used them recently in the pop manga book on this page, which it worked really good on everything, but the background was kind of hard to get smooth like I like, but here you can see, this is all ink tints here. And again, I love how the ink tints work, except for the background. It was real hard to keep it wet and moving smoothly. And granted, I did do this on a stream, guys. So I, you know, I do hurry a little bit on stream. But yeah, so you can see it didn't really blend like I like. But this was all done with ink tints. And their ink, it's actually ink. It's not like watercolor pencils, they're ink. So when they dry, they're supposed to be permanent after they are completely dissolved and dry. My thing is, is I never know if they're really 100% <laughs> dissolved. But anyway, so there's the ink tints, my original set of ink tints. Let's see what these are. I don't even remember all of them, but I keep everything bundled up. Okay, these are my Prismacolor watercolors. Okay, so these, this, I just have the small set here of the Prismacolor watercolors and I gotta say guys I really I spent so long since I used them I can't even remember how well they work um, maybe next week I'll pull out you know the different ones and we'll do some comparisons you know maybe we'll do some let me, I don't want y'all to get flashed out there uh, maybe we'll do some comparison next week you know because I haven't done them in so long so those were the Prismacolor and then these are, these were the, what are these? What are these? Oh, oh, the Faber-Castell. These are the Albert Durer ones. Uh, I think um, Faber-Castell also has a cheaper version. These were not cheap. These are the more expensive version of their watercolor pencils. Um, they're not the they're not the Faber Castell like the ones you can get in the kids department now. Uh, now Faber Castell you can get in like lower kids school brands, but this was the professional brand. And again, they were not cheap. You can tell they're the watercolor ones because they have the little watercolor um, little water brush right there. 
Yeah, I need more coffee. Yeah, I know. I'm drinking juice because my throat hurts, uh, Eileen. But, yeah. I'm soldiering on because I said I was going to do this video. We'll be fine. Okay. Uh, something's stuck in this one. That one didn't give me the rubber band. Hang on, guys. i got to got the two. Oh, that's what it is. It's hung up on the second slip there. Get in here. Get in here. Okay. So then I have just some... Um, Okay, so here are some, I think this was a chalk, a, it's like different things with white. It's got the white um, a Stabilo, wa the water, mm, hang on guys, the camera wants to flash out the white. The Stabilo All Pencil, I have it in black, white, and I think one other color. And then a couple of white watercolor pencils, again, if we do any in a white charcoals in here, if we do any kind of pencil um, comparison next week, why is that not fitting in there? Hang on, guys. It's hung up on something. One of the rubber bands or something. There we go. So uh, I'll I'll do a test on that. And again, here's all the kinds of white pens. Trust me when I say I've tried every kind of white pen ever made. And not just every kind. Where's my? But multiple times. <laughs> These are my um, my all my different attempts at the Signo Uniball. And the, don't get me wrong, they all worked for a while, <laughs> and may, a couple of them have probably even run out. But the Signo White, I have moved on from all white gel pens to my Posca. Nothing is better than the Posca. Now, granted, it, you can't get the exact fine line as this, but even the Jelly Roll I found, the Jelly Roll pen, seems to be working better than these Signos. And it used to be back in the scrapbook day that you had to get the Signo from Japan and it had the yellow Japanese writing on it. Otherwise, it wasn't as good, so they said. So I've got probably half of these have the yellow... <laughs> the yellow Japanese writing on them and you know because we were all about trying to find the best white gel pen back then. Oh, I'm sorry I'm probably talking really loud <laughs> into the camera so anyway yeah lots of white pens here and I have tried every kind of white pen I have not found anything that works better than the white Posca I just ordered three more from Jet Pens because I go through these quite quickly uh, Terry, nothing beats the white Posca to you as well. Yeah. Now, I gotta say, I've not tried any of the other colors. I've just not found the need for the color acrylic pens. And again, this is the fine tip one. And it might even be a little mashed down because this is an older one. I've had it for, like I said, I just ordered three more. But um, so Jean has, I think, a full set of the fine tip and the medium tip or. I don't know what it's called, but uh, so Jean has a lot of the colors, and she uses them in her art journal all the time because they go over paint. Um, you know, I don't know for you know, I wouldn't just be scribbling away on, you know, with them over acrylic paint. That's just me. But I don't think Jean's had any problems at all using her Posca colors over acrylic paint. And she said Jean says she loves her white Posca, but she loves her white pen as well. So, okay, so let me just show you a few of the white pens I've tried. Okay, this came off of one of these pens here. Okay, I'll find it in a minute. <laughs> I've got a pen cap. So these are some of the white pens and white items I've tried, other than white inks. Let me show you real quick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move the camera. I'm going to give you a little warning. I know there's a lag, but I am going to move the camera to show you my inks that I'm not going to show you today. <laughs> I'm not going to go through all my inks today, but I will show you. I'm going to take move the camera, so that's why I'm kind of talking a little bit longer, so just so you know, of the because um, uh, I'm getting ready to move the camera. Oh wait, there's even more down there. Oh, here's some more of my Bix. Oh look, more of my crystal Bix. That needs to go in the other tote. Those and these. <laughs> Paula, Paula made me buy these. I'm telling you. Paula was the first one that made me buy the, um, uh, Paula was the one that made me buy, no, that's, okay, the other ones are up there. She's the one that made me buy the uh, thick 
Bix, the um, by rose, the wide ones, she's the one that made me. Okay, so I'm going to move the camera just up here to show you. Up here on the top shelf, I keep them up here because I don't use them that often. But up here are all my inks. So, because, you know, I used to do calligraphy professionally, so I have a lot of ink. But, and then down here I have spray inks and other inks and other, you know, things. So, anyway, I'm not going to go through all the inks, but I do have a lot of white inks as well. Because I'm going to show you all the other things that I've tried with white pens. So, I've tried the Elmer's Painter's Pen. I'm not going to do any kind of reviews right now. If we do any demos, we'll do that next week. Because we're going to be here all night if not. The Bic Whiteout. The Stadler correction pen anything that we could use for white <laughs> the sharpie poster paint pen the sharpie noon streak permanent marking stick oh this is just an old color pencil blender that I never use blenders but somehow I have that in the white pens a twistable white crayon <laughs> Another Bic Whiteout. Another Elmer's Painter. The Deco Fabric White Paint Pen. These are what I used to use all the time before there was anything else, before there were Sharpie poster paints or anything. These are the uh, uh, Sakura uh, Pen Touch Whites. Of course, this one's, I'm sure, all dried out by now. But... I used to use these all the time. And then the white Sharpie Rub-A-Dub laundry marker. <laughs> I mean, we tried everything to get a good white. Okay. <clears throat> and then, oh, and then here's a bunch more, a bunch more Signos other than these. <laughs> all of these. Trust me when I say I've been through the white pen, um, <laughs> Hoarding stage, or whatever you want to call it. So all these are the these are the Pentel ones. These are some Pentel and the white Signos. The Jelly Roll. I really found the Jelly Roll to be fine, just fine. <laughs> Count my acrylic paints. Oh, these aren't all the paints I have right here. These are just the ones on my desk. I'll see if we can get over to the cart here in a little bit. But anyway, okay. So there's all those white, again, I don't even know how many of these work still, but if we go through any of these next week, I will be throwing away anything that doesn't work. So we won't be, oh, did I go through those? Yeah, that's the white pencils. All right, so let's see if I can squeeze these in here somewhere. Okay, now let me get out my jelly rolls, okay. All right, so then... I have the three sets of different kinds of the jelly rolls. Now, I don't know that they're complete sets. I don't know since these are I've had forever since they first came out, okay? Uh, scrapbooking days. Paula probably knows how old these are better than I do. But I have the set of the glitter ones, and these are called the jelly roll... Um, I got one that saw me. The jelly roll, just the jelly roll. But they have the shine, the glitter tops... I'm not sure why, because these are not the glitter ones. But maybe they just have the glitter tops to just distinguish them at the time from the other kind of jelly rolls. So I have those. Then I have the uh, glaze. And I never really cared for the glaze or the souffles because the souffles are supposed to be raised. I just didn't find that happening. <laughs> so if you like things on black paper... Then, you know, these kind of different, the glaze, I'm not sure which one it is. One of these works really well on black paper. But I got the glaze and the souffle. The white pen. <laughs> and then I have a cap here that I have no idea what that cap goes to. I don't have a loose pen here. Oh, here it is. Oh, okay. So these jelly, what are these jelly rolls then? Hang on. These jelly rolls are the... Um, these are the newer ones, I think. They're just plain jelly rolls. 
Yeah, I guess these are just jelly roll. Okay, why did that cat not want to stay on? Maybe they're the pastel? I don't remember. The brights or something? Anyway, so these jelly rolls, I have these as well. They have the nice bright colors. These are not as old as the other ones. And again, we'll do some demos with these next week. But I just want to kind of go through them so I don't have to do that. And, ugh, this one pin lid and just does not want to clamp down. Lock on there. Lock on there, baby. Lock on there. Okay. So then I just have a few Sharpies. No, no, these aren't the Sharpies. Okay, these are my paper, uh, my paper mate uh, Ink Joys. So I have a few Ink Joys. I love pens, guys. These, this is nothing. This is nothing for as far as pens go. I'm just showing you what I keep on my desk. <laughs> these are just the ones I keep on my desk in the tote. So these are the Ink Joys. Again, we'll do some demos of them next week. If y'all are interested in that, leave me a comment or y'all can tell me here. Okay, so then uh, I have random little, I don't even have a flashlight in here. I have a little pin light in there. Um, I have um, the, the flags, you know, the flag pins. Um, then I just have some random pins in here that write different colors. Here's a set of um, Signo, what are these? I don't know, they're Signo, Uniball Signo pins in bright colors. These are the bright colors. So I have those. And then I have quite a few little black. Like I have the black twistable, a black regular Sharpie, the hot, the fat Sharpie, the Sharpie pen. So some just some black pens right there. And then down here, I have some pen, a couple of pencils. And then these again are just probably some random pens. They're probably just all random. I don't even know. Here's a this is a staple strata. And um you know the big biro, um, some other old jelly roll type pens. These are, again are just different color um, ballpoint pens. So just all kinds of ballpoint pens on this side. And then over here on this side, I just have what few slick sticks and a couple of the Faber Castell. Um, what do you call them? You know, um, what are these called again? I keep wanting to say lip gloss. <laughs> the light when she crawls inside there and gets lost. Oh my gosh, Terry, so good. Terry said my flashlight. Let's see if it still works. Yep, it still works. Terry said that's for my flashlight when I get crawl in there and get lost. <laughs> oh, good one, Terry. Um, what are these called? The favorite Castell. Um, <laughs> what are these called? Good grief! You know these things. I have a few, a small set of these. You know the. <laughs> ah, you girls, that's a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> you think it's fun, busy, Joe? Good. Um, yeah. What are these things called? I, I'm getting. You know, the, these are called the twistable slip sticks. And again, Paula got me on these. See, y'all say, Paula, you know, Paula's the one that got me on a lot of this stuff, guys. Like these twistable slick sticks, all on Paula. Gelatos, thank you. Same for the gelatos, Paula. Although I don't know that she, you know, collect these up anymore or whatever. I think these kind of dried out on her. Am I right, Paula? She said, if you don't use it, you lose it because these dry up. I only have a small set. I think there's, I have a set of, I don't know, there's, I think I have 10 or something colors. And then, uh, but I do have the twistables. These are like the, they're like the gelato-ish in uh, the kids section. And I think they still sell them, don't they, Paula? Who, me? Yeah, Paula, who, me? So that's all that's in this tote. So again, let's see if I can pick this up here and show you. So this just kind of sits here. And then this tote just goes on top of that. And then this little bag of markers I use all the time just sits up on top of that, okay? And then these pins don't even sit over here on this desk. Okay, so then let me kind of come around here to show you some pencil cases. Again, I do have the ink tints, the 72 colors. And these are my current usable favorite things in color books. Again, 
I would not have bought these. Eileen gifted these to me. They're the um, the Zig Kurataki Clean Color Real Brush Watercolor Markers. This is not like water-based kids markers. This is real watercolor in a brush. It's a real brush tip right there. It's a real brush tip. And they're not cheap. They're not kids markers, okay? This is like using a watercolor uh, in, a, in a brush marker. So she sent me the set. I think it's 30. 30, I think, is how many are in here. So I keep them in my little porcelain watercolor tray. And I also keep, I have a lot of these laying around. Um, I use it to blend, to put some, like if you want to just get a little bit, you can just put some in there like that. And so you can see how vibrant they are. And then you can take your watercolor brushes and pick it up and, and water it down. So it's just like using watercolor. Just like, because it is watercolor. It's not kids Crayola toys. These are, these are professional grade watercolors. For sure wasn't me about the gelatos. Oh, okay, I won't repeat that, Paula. <laughs> I thought you had some and they dried up. But I could be confusing you with somebody else. So these, these, and my Neo Color 2 water soluble crayons are my water. Uh, these are the stacks up on my tape on my shelf. All my watercolor mediums, along with I've been using this lately in my color book. Color books. It's the little um, koi watercolor set. I've had it forever. And um, I think I got it at Hobby Lobby. It comes with a little tray that stacks, and I just kind of stack it out like this so I have lots of room to play. So I've been using this a lot in my uh, uh, color book, color booking lately, especially in the uh, Rainforest Island one. So that sets up there as my watercolor station. I'm one to, that believes in keep, how to keep organized is like with like. Pencils with pencils, paints with paints, watercolor stuff with watercolor. You know, every, my inks on the ink shelf, my paint, you know, everything is by like with like. That's how I stay organized, but that's just the way my mind works. Everybody has different ways of organizing that works for them. I also have to be able to see everything. I have, I do have uh, drawers, plastic drawers that hold my, like my napkins, my decorative napkins and chipboard and, you know, things like that, that I know are in the drawers. It's not something that I have to see to know that it's in the drawer, but for the most part, I have to see my supplies or I don't use my supplies, but that's just me. So that's why my art room is pretty much all floor to ceiling shelves and it would, that would bother a lot of people. Some people can't stand to see all their supplies out in the open because it's like too many choices and it confuses them. And, and if they had to look at like all this, you know, it would be like, oh my gosh, I can't stand to look at that all day. It just, you know, and so I understand there's no right or wrong way to organize your supplies. It has to work for you. And I have found what doesn't work for me is having things behind doors, behind, in drawers, I don't know what's in there. Supplies tucked away, tucked away doesn't work for me. Even my portfolios, hang on guys, I'm going to move you. <clears throat> even my portfolios and sketchbooks, even though they're under the table, I know exactly where they all are. So here's all my portfolios and sketchbooks. Art journals are over here. There's all my art journals. I know where everything is, and it's all out in the open. But that does bother a lot of people. <laughs> they can't organize that way. So it just has to be what works for you. Okay, so now the next thing of how I organize. Oh, one other thing here. And yes, I'm a little bit of a hoarder in this. In this. And that is... My barrel, my barrel Prismacolors and Sanfords. Paula gifted me some. Uh, Galeno gifted me some. These are, I'm going to just sit here and pet them. I will use them. Trust me, I will use them. But these are the Sanford and the old barrel Prismacolors. And there's just, I mean, yeah. So they're all bundled by color again. But they're protected in its own little case. 
<laughs> your problem is that your mind won't work. Terry, Terry trouble. That is just not true. Paul's twistables dried up and shrank. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm remembering. Yeah, Paul, uh, Jean, yeah. So these are, Paula sent me some, Galena gave me some. And so, yeah, and I'm, you know, I do love them. I truly do. As you can tell, they have their own little home. Their own little home. And I told you guys that all the, when I got some um, new Prismacolors, a new set a few years ago, I said, well, I'm going to give Cam all the, my nubs. Now, I still, I still keep my nubs because I just like the way they look. I moved them, though, into a peanut jar, so all my nubs, I still keep my nubs. But I gave probably a, a jar this big, a jar this full of barrel Prismacolor nubs to Cam. And his, his eyes glazed over. He got a little teary. He hugged them, ran into his room, and I've never seen them since. He's got them hoarded away somewhere. He, well, he hoards his, his Prismacolor barrel, Prismacolor little nubs. <laughs> oh, oh, you found some? Well, if you're not using them, I'll take all the barrel and pampers anybody wants to send me. Now, granted, guys, you can buy them on eBay. You can buy them on eBay, and if I really, really wanted to, I could... Go on eBay and buy me some barrel, original old barrel, unopened sets, but I haven't done that. So, so anyway, those just set right there on the side, okay? Okay, <laughs> so now let me show you some of the pencil cases that I have. Now, right here in front of me, I do have a few things. I did show y'all earlier that I bought three new, I bought three new water brushes, so they just happen to be sitting they just happen to be sitting right here because they're new. I just got them. So I'm just kind of petting them and playing with them. And they're the, they're the three sizes. There's the large one. They come in a set. The medium one. And I think if you buy the single one, the Pentel single one, it's this size. And then I also have, I bought the, the three set. And it also comes with the fine. And again, I bought these because I'm using them so much in my color booking. I, I have three of the medium ones still around here somewhere uh, that I still use too. But they were getting a little scruffy because I use them so much. So I used a 40% off coupon and bought a set of three at Hobby Lobby. I also always keep a Posca right in front of me. I always keep a uh, Dixon Ticonderoga black right in front of me. Not that I use a pencil. I use the black erasers. And I just buy them just for the erasers. Um, I keep a black Sharpie because I'm always writing notes to you guys. I have a Uniball uh, ballpoint pen, a Sharpie pen, and my uh, Graphic Gear Pencil 07 Blue Lead. That, um, it's, just a, it's just a technical pencil. I put blue lead in it. So. And it just snaps the cap will snap the lid back and then you push the back and it's got a um, eraser in there and I just use the 07 the 07 because it's a little thicker I was using just my uh, Prismacolor blue Prismacolor and the color race to sketch but I just wanted a technical pencil so I got this one because I saw someone recommend it so I bought this at Jet Pens so yeah, so these sit all the time right here along with some notes. My pencil sharpeners are in this little thing here. And then my sherry card that I always use to focus. And then I have this little pin case. Are y'all still hanging in with me? Uh, so in this little pencil case, again, these are some things I use all the time. So this sits right here as well. And I got this at a Blick. It was like $5 or something. You can get this exact same little recycled um, recycled pin case. I liked it because it had the big wide zipper and it was bright. I got it at Blick, but you can get it also at Jet Pens too. Okay. So some of the pins I have in here are my big Faber-Castell big pit, Brad Pitt, as we call it, the Brad Pitt. <laughs> brush pen, an orange sharpie because when I do my uh, birthday list 
for the month or the two, three weeks ahead of time. As I send out the cards, I check them off in orange so I don't forget that, you know, that tells me that that birthday card's been sent out. These are my favorite, personal favorite, regular drawing pencils. I use, I've been using the blue a lot. Um, but if I had to pick one sketching pencil personally, now I can't sketch with these on camera because it obviously will not show. It's an, a number two pencil. It's a technical pencil. It just has the roll. You just twist the tip to get the lead to come out and they're disposable. So once you use all the lead in these, um, they're just the, um, uh, paper mate, uh, sharp writer, number two technical pencil. Uh, so once they run out, you um, just throw them away. And you can get a pack of 10 for, they've gone up in price. I mean, I used to be able to get them for like 2 bucks for 10. I think it's now probably 6 bucks for 10. But I always buy the white, um, these white rubber erasers. I never use red rubber erasers, never. And, I mean, I've, I've accidentally used them, and the Cole Erase has them. If I'm using a Cole Erase pencil, I will use them just for that. Only if I forget to pick up my Ticonderoga with the black. I just found that red rubber erasers can smear pencil. I just don't like them. I do not like red rubber erasers. And that includes these. So I always just buy the white plastic thing. You can see here. I have tons of them. <laughs> Even my white. This is a kind of, um, uh, I use, that's my favorite kind of uh, erasers. Other than the black on the Ticonderoga. I don't know if this is interesting, Danny. I'm just talking about each supply as I pick it up. So these are my favorite, just personal. I love sketching with these because or drawing with them because it's so tiny. You know, it's so just a number two pencil. But I've been just so loving drawing with the blue Prismacolor that I said, well, I, it, I love it because it's the color, but I wanted something thinner, but not too thin. I didn't want like an 05 where... This would probably be considered maybe, I don't know if that would be an 05 or an 07. It doesn't really say. It's just number two. So I'm not sure what lead size that is. But I like it a little bit thicker. Let me see if I can pop that out a little bit. So that's the thickness of a 07. And, uh, <clears throat> but anyway. Uh, <clears throat> Hey, Terry L., anybody else popping in? Again, I can't see the t names right now. I have to toggle the names because chat's been a, a booger bear today. Okay, so then the Faber-Castell pits. I have a bunch of uh, the. This is the brush pen one. And again, I like this for just coloring around in the color books, around the edges when I can't get a close-up or a tiny little area of black. I like this. Again, I have quite a few different... The Signo Uniball, um, just uh, what do you call them? Um, ballpoint. Well, I think they're gel pens technically, clickables. But I have a purple, a red, a black, two blacks, a, a green. I think that's the whole set. So I use these for just like right. It's kind of like a ballpoint pen feel, but a little bit smoother because it's gel. So those go in here. I keep those handy, but not like out on my desk. Okay, same thing for an extra blue uh, pencil and the pit brush pen. The big pit marker, my orange Sharpie. And I always keep a black, a white pencil in every case. Every pencil case should have, unless I've pulled them out because I couldn't find a white or something, uh, a black and a white Prismacolor in every pencil case. Um, then I have my um, my brush pen that I ordered from, this is a refillable brush pen that I ordered from Jet Pens, and I plan on using it more during the uh, my Inktober drawings, which I already have planned out. I, I kind of did a little show of uh, what I plan on doing on Inktober in between the shows here, but these come with the um, uh, refill, you know, the little cartridges to refill. I can't really tell you what it is. It's the Pentel. I think it's just the Pentel brush pen. So it's a Pentel brush pen. Okay, and you'll see me using it during Inktober. Now, when I do, um, when I 
I will show you some black ink in a second. When I do inking with like large areas, I don't color in like with this brush pen. I won't. I'll, I'll use a a pen and a dip. You know, a pen, a brush, and a and ink. So I'll show you the inks I use for ink black ink here in a minute. So let's go ahead and finish with the pencil cases. Then I have some cola rays. I have some. I I don't buy these for. I don't buy these for coloring and an extra blue because, you know, like I said, I use them blue a lot. Um, I don't use these for coloring. I just use them for sketching. So I have the, the light blue, the dark blue, the indigo blue, the black, the terracotta, the red. What color red is it? Carmine red, and that's the indigo blue. So for sketching, it's kind of like, um, it's a little bit softer than a varathin I found. But they're not really made for coloring. They're more for sketching. And then again, I have another, um, uh, the Caran uh, the d'Ache Pablo White. Because uh, I do have this one because, um, what do you call it, Cass Kathy recommended it. And I do say it is good. I'm just used to using my Prismacolor. Okay, but if I had to recommend any, I'd, the Pablo or the Prismacolor for white. You just can't beat those two. And no matter, I mean, even luminance. The white in the Pablo and the white in the in the uh, Prismacolor are the best white pencils. Oh, you're taking notes? Oh, busy. Busy, email me. I'm going to send you a special art card. Email me. We have my email. Busy gets an art card because she's taking notes. And then another just Bic Biro, you know, crystal Bic pen, just regular old ballpoint. So that just sits right over here, right there by my paints, you know, and then I got a little tray here of just random stuff and all that there. Under, under, because see, Lappy sits up on, Lappy sits up on a, a pantry rack. So when y'all saw me get the coffee spill on Lappy, what happened was my coffee spilled and splashed up under. Oh my gosh, I don't even want to go there. Let's just pretend that never happened. Okay, so now another few pencil cases. We can never have enough pencil cases. <laughs> so I have this one was my favorite one for the longest time, and it still sort of is my favorite one. I bought this from Mistel years ago, and this is a handmade pencil case from Mistel. It actually has, let me just dump it out. It actually has her little tag on it right there. And it's hand sewn and handmade by Mistel. She hand painted the fabrics, and it's pretty worn now, guys. Because seriously, I use this baby. Look, it's got all kinds of ink in there. I really, I mean, I use this thing to death. So I love it, though. I love Mistel. Just I love Mistel. But anyway, so this is this, and and what I like about it, it sits. Look, it just sits. You know, other pencil cases like this, it's not. It's, you know, it's kind of like a handbag. I've still yet to find the perfect handbag that doesn't do this, you know. I'm looking for that perfect handbag that does this. <laughs> just behaves itself. You're going to keep Hobby Hobby knows. Uh, hobby knows, okay. Okay, so in here, again, this is a lot of the same stuff, just a lot more duplicates. I hope I'm making, I hope I'm doing camera operations okay. I haven't, these are pretty much, you know, any metal pencil sharpener. I love this one, which I have multiples of. I probably have 10 of these laying around somewhere. They're just the little cheap metal ones. I think you get them with the general sets or, you know, Michaels. Anyway, they're just the little metal ones. And I think you can, you can change those blades out. I've never gone to the trouble because they're like 50 cents. I just buy a new one. But yeah, I think you can get a little wrench in there and change the blades. I probably have some blades lying around here somewhere. Never have changed the blade the first time. Never. But I have a couple of those and I love the little gold bullet ones. Brass, I guess you say. They're brass. I get these at, uh, you can get these, used to get them at Michael's. I'm not sure you can still get these at Michael's. I think you can still get them at, um, get them at Blick. I think they're just called brass bullet sharpener, and they're real weighty. I like it because it, it's weighty in your hand. I just like the feel of it. That, and then the Coom wood cutter. It's called the Coom wood cutter. It's got the two sizes in there. Those are my three go-to. Trust me, I have tried every single 
pencil, I, I mean, I can probably pull out here somewhere 30 pencil sharpeners right at my fingertips. These are the three I have used the most. I don't use electric sharpeners at all. No, no electric sharpeners. So this just sits right here on my desk all the time. Little bits of those triangle white plastic. These right here, so this is probably the newest one I have. You can get these, um, they're general tri, uh, general uh, triangle uh, pencil sharpeners, I mean uh, erasers, and they do break pretty easy after you've used them quite a bit. They'll start, you know, falling apart, but they still work. I mean, you know, they still work. So, okay, then I, another blue <laughs> uh, sketching pencil, tons of Ticonderogas, and if you notice, no, not one single Ticonderoga has ever been used as the, most of them are not even sharpened, um, but they're, but the, um, let's see, where's the other one, I've got two or three here, the, um, it's for the erasers that I, I stock up on Ticonderogas at the beginning of every school year for the uh, erasers. Okay, uh, I have some more of the my paper mate. Let's see here. Let me kind of turn this way because I think the focus is better. The paper mates with my own erasers on them. Just a blue pen. Another one of these. You never can have too many. All right, so here's these are the uh, woodless graphite I was telling you about. That for camera. Now these are good to take to the museum. Uh, or if you're out uh, sketching, because you can do quick sketches wide. You can get a wide, um, quick sketch with these, you know, sideway. But it is, gra it is graphite, and it will smear really bad, okay? But if you're out sketching quick, this is, you get a nice, good angle on the side. And I just love woodless graphite. I just, I like these. So if I'm out doing any kind of sketching in public, this is what I trained Cameron to use when he sketched in public for the first time. That was these. Another Ticonderoga. Another bit of blue Prismacolor. You found a great pencil sharpener actually in the school section of Walmart. It was $4, has a two hole, two hole sizes and metal but without the plastic reservoir, and who does it ever make nice points? <laughs> My birthday's in February, Jean. Okay, so then a couple, <laughs> um, a couple more. These are the staple brands, I think. Um, uh, they're not as good as the uh, Uniball, the Signo Uniball, but they're just a couple of ballpoint pens. Like sketching with pen. It, I, I don't mind drawing with pen. Um, you know, I really, to tell you the truth, I really prefer drawing with something like, uh, you know, a blue or, you know, the blue, um, because, and I don't, I don't rarely erase. I mean, you know, when I'm doing those sketches f that I showed you a little while ago for, um, my Inktober, I did a little erasing, you know, it's not, I'm not opposed to erasing, but I find that I think Danny Gregory uh, I've read all his books and, you know, did all his workbooks and stuff. He, he, he makes you draw with a pen. Not that you have to. Don't email me. Oh, my gosh, I can't draw without a racy. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Then I have, okay, so this is where I store. I have three or four different, um, these Prismacolor colorless blenders. I never use these, but I have them. <laughs> so they just kind of sit in there because I never use colorless blenders. I blend everything just, here's, a, is that another one? Oh, no, this is a Prismacolor watercolor pencil. Oh, this is one that cracked, so I think I pulled it out because it was a Prismacolor fail. It's cracked all the way down. Um, let's see, what else do I have in here? I have, a, of course, Prismacolor black, Prismacolor white. Every pencil case has to have a black and white. I have a couple of my, all right, so here's the, my favorite thing about the ink tints. The ink tents, these are my favorite in the ink tents because they're ink, right? They're ink and a pencil. Oh, wait. We're supposed to sharpen pencils? I thought we were just to buy more sharpened ones. Eileen! Eileen, <laughs> we love you, Eileen. <laughs> these are my favorite ink tents, okay? The Payne's Gray. Again, they're water-soluble ink. The Payne's Gray, the Ink Black, it's called Ink Black, and 
the is that called bark? I think it's well, it's brown. Whatever. It's called bark. I think. So these are the these are my favorite ink tints because it's like sketching with ink, and then you can water it and it's like ink. So I keep those here in my to go pencil case. Some other things here, another black. So y'all always say you don't have you need a new white pencil. They're just all stuck everywhere. They're just stuck everywhere in my pencil cases. They're all over the place. Trust me. And if I if I ever go to Hobby Lobby or Michaels and I don't know what to buy, I will pick up a black and white pencil. Uh, you know that's just my go-to thing. I have to have my black white. And actually, I could up until I got my graph um, the graph gear. I was using these like crazy to the blue Prismacolor. Okay, another bit, a little bit of a half of a woodless graphite. <clears throat> uh, this is a Varathin, I think. This is a indigo blue Varathin. Another black <laughs> Premier. Um, this is the Aqua Aqua the Stabilo All Pencil. The Stabilo All Pencil in uh, blue. Then I have a few, and I don't know why these are in here, except that I'm thinking maybe I use them. They really don't need to go in here. I need to just pull these out. I don't know why they're in here, but they're the Derwent Color Soft. Um, I have a handful of uh, browns that I probably picked up for some flesh tones or something. So I just have a, a few Color Soft. Uh, in the browns. Let me put a rubber band around these and if we talk about pencils next week. Let's see, I've got to find a rubber band. <clears throat> we'll talk about those. I'll put them in my pencil case over here with the pencils. It goes up there, the pencils. All right. So that's just in this little case here. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're okay. <clears throat> so again, this is my little Mistel bag. And if I ever just want to take just one little pencil case, I'll empty all this out and throw anything in here I want and carry this. This is my like little go-to pencil case, which is, I got more in there than I normally have if I go anywhere. Okay. Then I have this hot dog one. <laughs> And uh, again, it, I got it just because it was cute. I loved it. It was just so stinking cute. <laughs> it's like, you know, 14, 16 inches. I don't know. And these are really cheap at Blick. It's the same, it's the same uh, cases like these that you can get. I think you can get them at Hobby Lobby now, too. But I got all mine at Blick. I just like them. They're sturdy. They're recycled. They have good zippers on them. And they're just, they're plastic and they're real sturdy. I love these things. Love, if I could recommend one pencil case, it would probably be this one. It's the same stuff that this is made out of. And now you can get them in different colors, I think. That's, I just like black. But I love it. And they come in a bigger size. I have probably five of these. I've given, I don't know how many to Cameron. Uh, but I love these. And you can get them at Hobby Lobby and Blick. I don't know if they're the same brand or not. But they're just really awesome, awesome pencil cases. Um, yeah. So in here, I try to keep my specialty pens, like my um, the my Jelly Roll uh, Star Gels. I have about four or five of the Star Gels, and they are the sparkliest pen you will ever write with. They are light in a pen. Nothing, well, now, I can't say nothing because I haven't tried those, um, what's that other one that kind of reminds you of a makeup thing? I don't know. Uh, there's some other kind of a glittery pen thing out now that I've not tried. But these star gels, and you can tell what they are because they have a little star, a shooting star. Is it on the cap? Somewhere on them they have a little shooting star. So I think I have a pink, a blue, a silver, a gold, and a clear. And again, it's kind of like the stickles. If you get any one, get the clear. Because then you can go over anything. Show that jet pen mechanical pencil. Yes, 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 yes. It's a graph gear. This is the 07. 
uh, I think the 05, you go on Amazon and they'll, and they'll show you like real close-ups of them and twist them and show you all about them. This is the 07. I think the 05 has gray. It's like a rubbery thing sticking up there so that when you hold it, you feel those little rubber gripper things. It feels really good in your hand. It's weighty. And then you have your, um, this is the 07 blue lead. And then, uh, and you click it and the tip goes back up in the barrel. So then you click it down again, and there's your pencil. And then you can just click the little latch thing here, the little clip, and click it, and it goes back in. So, and uh, you, you have to course order the lead. You can you have regular lead, that's just, you know, blue lead. It just, you know, saves me from using the blue Prismacolor. So. I also have another one I got from Jet Pins that I have. Where did I put it? Oh, it's sitting here somewhere. It might be in here. I have another uh, mechanical pencil. The red and blue one has blue lead on one side, red on the other. And it looks vintage. And I just had it sitting here. What did I do with it? Hmm. Hmm. It's probably in my big pencil cases. I haven't got to the big pencil cases yet. <laughs> okay. So we're already at an hour. Okay, I've got, I've got to get crack a lacking. So anyway, I've got all kinds of uh, brush pens, and I have my silver and gold Pentel. These are the best silver and gold pens I have found, and they come in a two pack. I got them at Hobby Lobby. There's a gold and a silver in a pack, and it's only like four bucks for the set. These these Pentel Sunburst metallics and the and they come with a set gold and silver the pentel sunburst used to make a white pen and they don't make them anymore and i went to now maybe you can find them online somewhere if you really dig or something but anyway staples was selling the white ones sunburst pentel sunburst they work like a charm they work better than the uniball signo so I bought a few, used them, and used them, and used them, went back, and, and they said, oh, that was just a promotional item. We don't sell them. I said, well, I'll just go ahead and order them through your catalog, or, you know, order them. I'm like, no. He goes, no, no, you don't understand. We don't sell them anymore. And I don't know if I've told you all that uh, Bill Cosby, back in the 60s, he had an out record album out. I know I've told you all the story. But anyway, there's a story about Bill Cosby uh, having, well, I won't get into the whole story, because I've told it so many times, you all probably get sick of hearing it. But anyway, he had some. He wanted. He asked uh, a friend, uh, a school teacher, because he used to be a school teacher. Bill Cosby did a gym, you know, gym teacher when he started out before he was a comedian, and uh, so he had a toothache. And before he could get the dentist, he asked one of his teacher friends, "I need, uh, I need something for the pain until I can get to the dentist." She goes, "Well, I got it. It's Midol." If y'all, <laughs> older ones know what Midol, you know, I don't even know if they make Midol anymore. But anyway. And so he says, well, is that safe for me to take? And she goes, yeah, it's safe. So he said, I took one, and the pain went away. So he said, and then later on in the day, the pain came back. And uh, she, she, he went back to her and said, I need some more of that Midol. And she goes, well, I don't have any more. He goes, what, are you some kind of junkie dealer? That's what I felt like when Sharpie, I mean, when Staples told me they no longer made the white, <laughs> the white Starburst pen. I said, what, are you some kind of junkie dealer? <laughs> You get us hooked on these pins, and you quit selling them. How can you even do that? Anyway, there's my there's my pin store. I do have one Posca that's still unwrapped, and I got more on the way. Um, you know, another another uh, sunburst. This is the one here. Look, th take a look at it because I can't find them anymore. There's the, what the pintail sunburst looks like. <laughs> and so, just some random pencils and pins. Here's um. Uh, this is an awesome pencil for any kind of mixed media. It's the Kimberly X9 XXB. And I found this through Mistel. Uh, you can buy them in Michaels and Hobby Lobby. They are the darkest, blackest lead you can buy that I know of without going into charcoal. It's X9 XXB. Now, remember, you can, you can get HB, 3B, 6B. Well, I don't know about 3. 6B. <laughs> This is 9XX, and it's big, and nothing lights this dark. I mean, look at that, guys. Look how black that is. It's like black paint. 
It's like black paint. This is the best. If you like mixed media and smearing, and you can even, I think, get it wet a little bit. I mean, this is just the awesomest. This is like Nestel's, go well, used to be. I haven't seen her do mixed media for a while or videos or anything, but this used to be Nestel's go-to pencil, the 9XXB. And look, I mean, it's just like paint in a pencil. Paint in a pencil, people. But it is graphite. It will smear. Okay, so, yeah, another Sharpie pen. Okay, i got to get crack a -lack So, anyway, I love this case. And it sits over here with just extra things in it. So, again, I have this pull-out tray, right? So, in the tray, I have another little tray of pencils. <laughs> I have extras of all my, um, you know, these, tech, my little tech, paper make technical pencils. And, I'm, and there's probably a stack of um, black Ticonderogas in here. And just some random Sharpies and just stuff that I use occasionally. Pink Sharpie, red pen. So, this little tray sits in the big tray. And then in this tray, I also have my Sharpie. This is what, these are what I like to write with. If I write with a pen, oh, I have that on there for a reason because that's purple. I kind of keep a piece of washi tape on that because that pen is purple and I get it mixed up with the black one. So I have a piece of purple washi tape on there. But these are the color pens, the color Sharpie pens. They're not markers. They're Sharpie and it says right on there, pen. Don't confuse them with the markers, okay? You can use these on a color book, most color book pages, without it going through, okay? The Sharpie pens, but they're not cheap either. Uh, I use them for writing. These are my writing, like if I'm annotating a book or writing, this is what I use to write with, these. Uh, I always have my big uh, uh, drafts, um, horsehair draftsman uh, pencil, Flicker, pencil flicking, shaving pencil, you know, shavings. <laughs> I've had this for, I think Hubster got this for me when we lived in Alaska. So this is at least 33 years. This is at least 33 years old, right here. I have extras, ones of these that I've been using a lot again, you know, those. Okay, then I have a little tray of, oh yes, <laughs> more pencil sharpeners and bits of erasers. More pencil sharpeners, pencil sharp, pencil sharp, some wax to wax your threads. More, these are, these are the uh, refills for my little electric. Another sharpener and then erasers, including the little battery one I was gifted. And these are the refills for that. Erasers. Yes. Oh. Here's some more eraser refills. All white rubber erasers. That's my go-to. My go-to. Okay, you know what I'm going to do real quick since y'all are all here? I just saw this in here. I'm going to do a, oh, how am I going to, I was going to say I'm going to do a giveaway, but I can't see chat. I don't even know if I have any mods here. Okay, next week, we're gonna, next week when we do a pencil pen talk, I'm going to give away uh, one of the general XXB. I think this is an XXB. Is this an XXB? I can't see it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'll give away one of these next week. Unopened. Give away one of those. I'll leave it out so I remember. Okay. Okay, now. So let me go ahead. I'm going to move you guys over here real quick. If I could, I won't be able to see chat, but I'm going to move you over here to my carts real quick before I do the rest of my pencil cases. So right around over here, okay, here are my carts. This is all stamps, foam, foam stamps all in there. And it might be a little hard to see because it's dark on this side of the room. Here's my paint cart. So these are all the rest of my paints that are not on my desk. Then in here are acrylic paints and that are in tubes, say so like these kind. I got rags on top of them, but these are all my acrylic paints. Then I got one with watercolors. I got one with oils. So these are other paints that are in tubes. Hope y'all can see. Hope y'all can see. Okay. Then over here, these are all pen and pencil and pastel. 
So, for instance, I'm not going to go through all these drawers because my camera won't reach. I don't really want to take them all out. But, again, all kinds of... I'm never going to run out of black. These are all black pens. Well, I take that back. There might be a, the occasional red in there. But these are all pens. Let's see if I can still see. Then in here are pencils. Look, from Sharon L. She sent me some Ticonderoga, and I've already used half of them. So I got, uh, you know, the graphite, water-soluble graphite, all kinds of pencil sets. A pencil drawer. Am I staying on camera, guys? These are the only Sharpies I have left that did not dry out. They're so old. And Cameron, used before he used Copics, used to use my Sharpies and my uh, Bic Markalots. And there's my Luminance box. I couldn't bear to get... I couldn't bear to get rid of my Luminance box. And paint pens, pit watercolors, pencils, charcoal. Anyway, and then that's my collage bin right there. That's all collage fodder, including that box right there. That's all collage fodder. So I won't go through my rest of my room right now. So hang on so you don't get dizzy here. Me... Okay, so let me bring you back over to the desk. All right, so again... These are my go-to everyday pencils in here. Well, it's like four carts. It's four different carts. You know, I bought one at a time. When they go on sale for 50% off, I buy one, buy one, buy one. Anyway, so this is what I go to all the time for my color booking. And these are the rest of the sets that are not bundled up in here, you know. All right, so let me show you the rest of my pencil cases. All right, it's super hotter. All right, <laughs> this is my favorite, all-time favorite pencil case. Hubster got this for me at um, uh, Army Surplus online. I'm not sure what the case was supposed to be. It's got all these Velcro things on the outside, some kind of medical or, you know, some kind. So it's got all this, like, to attach to your belt or something and all these little pockets on the outside. But, oh, yeah, it cl it'll even close up this full. So on one side, I have all black and white pencils. On the other side, I have all black pens. So the, this is like my go-to pencil case of all time. So <laughs> trust me, I have every kind. Of, you have this one? Oh, my gosh. I love this. And it, close, it will close up. I mean, and it's got the, uh, the bungee things on the side. Anyway, so this has one of uh, pretty much every black pen I have. There's a couple red ones in there. But look, it's got all kinds of pockets down inside. I've got extra erasers and other things in there. And then on this side, again, guys, we'll go through the individual pencils later. I have charted these out at one time. So then I'll, here's all my black and white pencils, one of every, pretty much everything I have, and including um, some Conti crayons, black and white. They fit right in there, too. So, yeah, these are, these are my pencil. My go-to pencil case, that sits, like, right handy. If I need a black pencil or a black pen, rather than going and digging through all the drawers, this is where I have probably one of every pen and pencil. Um, I do like you, the black one side, white on the other. Yeah, doesn't that work well, Terry? Um... Where did you know it's, it's at Army Surplus? Army, I'm not sure if it's armysurplus.com. It's a, just look up Army Surplus and you'll be able to find it again. I used to have a link to it, it's only like it. Well, let me put it this way years ago when he bought it for me, it was like 10 bucks. I'm not sure how much it is now, but it, it looks like this. So if you want to look for it, because I'm not sure exactly what the bag is used for military wise, right? You know, military wise. But I will tell you, I do have this other one, too, that I think I'm, I'm, I bought it for a specific reason, and I'm not using it. I bought it at the, um, at the sporting goods store. And I thought this would be really cool. Let me put these, hang on, guys. I thought these would be really cool. And it's, if you want a cheap... If you want an inexpensive pencil case, go to the fishing department, 
of any sporting goods store, okay, whatever sporting goods store you have. The fishing department, that's where I found this. Now, I haven't really used it, um, but I'm going to show it to you. It says tournament choice, and, you know, you're going to have some kind of fishing brand or something on the cover, but, like, you know, I don't care about that. And you probably you may find a pretty pink camouflage one, but, you know, pretty much you're going to have your OD green or whatever. But this one, I love these kinds of uh, clasps. You know, these are my favorite kind of clasps. But anyway, it not only has a pocket here in the front and a pocket here, but this is what I liked about it. Look, it has rings in the center, and all these bags came with, they're like, it's like baggies, you Ziploc baggies, you just, you know, like that, but you could put every color, not, now, granted, I couldn't put every pencil I own in these, but you can put all your pencils in, like, all your yellows, oranges, reds, pinks, purple, brown, flesh tones. See what I'm saying? You could put, and, and because they open on this end, you could just, you know, it's like a travel. I call it like a travel kit if you wanted to take pencils to travel with. And it's in the fishing section, yes. Now, here's what I didn't like about it. it comes, the rings are on there and everything. It has the rings. You can open those rings. You can buy more of these. You could use this for other supplies. You could use this for collage bits. If you don't have as many, you know, drawerfuls of collage, you just have a little bit of collage. Here's what I don't like about it. It does not lie flat. The zipper does not allow you to open this flat. See, it doesn't lie flat. I'm almost tempted to cut that right there <laughs> so that it'll lie flat. But that's the only drawback of this one. Now, again, there's probably other ones that, that lie flat. But, I mean, again, it's made for fishing equipment. It's not made for... It's not made for art supplies, right? But the same thing goes if, if you buy, like, what's called the art bin. You know, the cases to put your art supplies in? They're, the, they're fishing tackle boxes, guys. Go to the plastic tackle box area of your sporting goods stores. And, like, an art bin, you know, the, the fish, they look like a fishing tackle box. They're, but they're called art bin at uh, Michael's or Hob wherever you Blick, you know, wherever you buy those plastic, um, look like, you know, tackle boxes. And they could be 30 bucks or more. And the art supply store, you go to Walmart or Target or any place they sell fishing gear. I, I go to, um, you know, we have Dick's Sporting Good. We have um, Academy. So we have different sporting goods stores here. Uh, what's the other one? Starts with a G. There's another one. Anyway, uh, there's a whole bunch of sporting goods st stores here. And if you buy a tackle box, it's in the medical. You think it's the medical area that uh, my black uh, army surplus bag, Terry? She thinks it's in the med field medical uh, bag. So anyway, um, but if you get a tackle box, you're going to get bigger space as much because you can you know those guys they got those tackle boxes that could be as big as this table and they're cheap so look for tackle boxes if you want a box to keep your supplies in if you travel or a student or anything like that tackle boxes people tackle boxes and again i love this and i probably would not have bought it if i would have looked at it a little close because this was only i think this was 14 dollars I think this is 14 bucks, maybe 12. I don't remember. And um, it will, if I didn't know it wasn't going to lie flat, I, I was, that's the only disappointing part. But if I'm taking it to travel and you can put different things in each bag, you know, and, and zip it, you know, lock it up and then zip up the whole case. And it has a nice rubber handle. And I think, no, this one didn't. I thought this one might have a strap, but it just has the handle. And it's got a pocket on the back, another mesh pocket on the back. So it's a nice little bag for 12 bucks, you know. So there's that. Then the other two things that I'm going to show you real quick are how I keep my nice brushes. So, our, well, big brushes and nice brushes. So this has got pretty much, I just use this old copper hopper because it's big for the larger brushes, long-handled long oil painting brushes. 
long handle brushes. Water, well, it's just a little bit of everything, but they're my long handle brushes that I really don't use because I'm not I'm not oil painting or water really water coloring except in a in a um, what do you call it a uh, color books. So these are my long handle brushes in here, just because I don't use them that much, so I keep them in here. And then I have my nice expensive watercolor in here. I mean oil. So these are my oil painting brushes that are, you know, sables and all that. So these are my nice uh, badger hair sables, more, you know, the more expensive brushes. These, I keep them in here just so I don't accidentally use them on my um, acrylic. My nice soft mop brush, my badger hairs. So these are all for oils, and I don't want them to be confused with my um, inexpensive acrylic brushes that I just, you know, slop around in water. So, yeah. So, yeah. So that's, I keep these, like, off the desk because I don't use them that much anymore anyway. And so finally, the last thing I'll show you are these pencil cases. So if y'all y'all remember that Kelly gifted me a new set of new set of Prismacolors. Well, she gifted me the the cases to put them into. Now I think these are exact cases that Jean has. So what I do is I have three of them. Two of them hold my Prismacolor, and the third one holds my um, other pens and pencils for travel. So these, I think, are the same ones that Jean has. They have double zippers, and the zippers, once you go all the way around, they snap shut. So the zippers go all the way around, snap shut. I, I keep them open because I use them, obviously. So in one, I have them separated out by, and each one is supposed to be, you can squeeze three pencils. I think they're supposed to hold 120 uh, I forget now. Maybe Jean can remember. You so you can shove three in here, okay? Uh, if I have more than two in here, they're you know they're kind of still. I don't want to say it's a pain to take them in and out, but when I what I'll do is if I'm doing a portrait or whatever, I'll take out all the colors I'm using, use them, and put them back, okay? Um, yeah. So th that has these have uh, double sides, Jean in each and uh, I think they say you're supposed to put three in each that would be really tight though so I have two in each and I kind of laid them out they're probably mixed up again they're not exactly how they were laid out in the box but anyway so I have all my greens blues teals and it goes on to the blues some purple reds oranges and yellows in this case okay and then in this case, I have, let me just get it upside down. I have the flesh tones. This is the ones I use all the time. The flesh tones, the peaches, the browns. So you get into the browns, the grays, the neutrals, all the grays, some uh, purples, 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 and pinks. So this is like my, um, I have it in the pink, in the pink and it's, it's pink. It looks kind of orange on camera. But it's kind of a coral color. Uh, and this has got all my flesh, my portrait, most of my portrait. Again, I'll still use blues and grays and stuff out of here. But mostly all my uh, portrait pencils are in this one. So I have these two to keep all my new set of Prismacolors in. And then in this one, I put in uh, pens and like just random pens. Because I don't use Copics or anything like that. But I have a couple Copic grays. Some multi-liners, some of the Faber-Castell, the small, medium, fine uh, set of the Faber-Castell pens. And then these came in a manga set that I got off of Blick on sale uh, about a year ago, I think. And it has the peach tones, and they're the Faber-Castell ones again. The brush pens, like this. And this set, these, uh, you can get this in a full on, I think 72 colors. I just got the manga set because of the colors, the skin colors. And then I have two other uh, brush pens that I got from Jet Pens. Then on this side, 
I have my Sharpies, another multi-liner, a thick Sharpie, some white gel pens, my silver and gold gel pen, all my blue, different kind of blue, um, what do you call it, uh, leads for my for my pencils. This this is the one that I told you that I got at Jet Pens too. It has blue on one side, red on the other. It just I got it because it looks so cool and vintagey. This is cream color. Just reminds me of the fifties. Has the old timey you know pocket clip on there, and so uh, it's got the blue and the red on the so on either side. So that it comes with red and blue uh, in it. Then I of course have to have my Dixon Ticonderoga for the eraser. And then this, um, I put my, um, this is the refills for my uh, Pentel brush pen in there. And I did order some more of these too because I know I'll be using it a lot. I just got a little piece of washi tape to hold it shut. Um, I bought the uh, some more of this because I know I'll be using more of the Jet Pen refills for this pen. Where is it? It's in this bag here. Where's the head is? My Pentel jet, I mean my Pentel uh, brush tip brush marker. This one. These are the refills. And if you go to Jet Pen to buy something, it, it will say this is the pen, this is the refill that you need, whatever. So um, now this right here, this would not fit in here, and I wanted this in here. So I cut, and it took a little doing because this was really sewn well, but I cut that extra. Uh, seam right there. See how the little pockets? They had a pocket cut, I mean a, another uh, stitch right there. But I, I, I wanted this in here and I couldn't get it in there so I took my fine scissors and just worked it and worked and worked it till I got those stitches out so I can put my extra ink in there. So yeah, everybody's linking up things in the chat. So anyway, so this is just my, uh, this is my sketching. Uh, this is my sketching, drawing, um, pens and and uh, mostly pens you know I have a couple pencils in there but it, this is mostly my pen pen set uh, other than my leads and my refills you know uh, so those are my cases and again those cases sit right up here on the shelf right there there's my baby wipes and you saw all the other stuff there's my washi tape and then it starts getting up into my inks and all that up there so, y'all, I've done a room tour before. We probably need to do another one sometime. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of show you guys all my, um, all the pens and markers and stuff that sit on my desk. And again, if y'all enjoy that next week, we'll maybe do um, some pencil, pencil <laughs> and pen comparisons and testings. I do have a seam ripper somewhere, Terry. I don't sew. Um, I don't even have a sewing machine. I don't sew at all. I mean, I can sew a button and a hem and, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and I used to do cross-stitch. But I don't do, because uh, I used to work for a cross-stitch company, so I had to know how to cross-stitch. But uh, I don't sew. Uh, I don't. I used to embroider a little bit as a, you know, teenager in the, you know, 70s or whatever, but... Yeah, I, so anyway, to answer your question, I do have a seam ripper around here somewhere, Terry, but I don't know where. But yeah, so that's how I organize my pens, pencils, and paints, and every, you know, pretty much everything in here is organized by thing. Paints with paints, pencils with pencils, pens with pens, markers with markers. You know, that's just how um, I find things really easily. I am loving Trippy, can you tell, Terry? I am. You you ratted me out, girl. She said, yes, I love Trippy, who uh, is my new tripod. And I, I'm just holding on to his little legs. I'm holding hands with Trippy, Terry. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so when I do the, you know, when we do the next uh, color book, which on Monday, we want, I'm going to do Romantic Country. So, and again, I'll, I'll adjust it so we're like right up on it. You know, so see, here's one of Trippy's legs. There's one of Trippy's legs. Woohoo! Trippy, showing off your leg. <laughs> so we're gonna do romantic. Kind of just probably not focusing right now, guys, because I have to focus it for close-up work. But we're gonna do romantic country. And if you didn't know this eerie woman, eerie girl, I'm not. You know, I don't really know her other than this book. She's written a couple, I think. But she, everything drawn in this book is drawn with a toothpick. 
all drawn with a toothpick. And I'll read her bio at the beginning of this book on Monday. So, but this is what we're going to work in on Monday. So, for the person that uh, on YouTube, um, who was it? It was, um, let me see, I had her name written down. Ghost Hunter Girl or Ghost Hunter Lover, something like that. Ghost Hunter Girl, I'm not sure. Anyway, she on YouTube requested that we color in this book. And again, what I want to try to do at least once a week, every other week, I want to I want to ask anybody on YouTube, because you, you guys here in Ustream can talk to me all the time while we're streaming, right? You don't have a C oh. Um, you can talk to me all the time and ask me to do stuff all the time. But if you're on YouTube and if you want me to work at a book that I have or plan on getting or want to see a supply or a tip or a trick or a technique that I can or know, if I don't know, I will tell you who to go to. Uh, you know, if I know a person, like for instance, the Pablo Pencils and the Luminance, Kathy, Cass, Kathy Arbor on YouTube, check her out. I mean peruse the awesomeness that is Kathy Arbor for that. So if, you know, if I don't know about it, I'll try to send you to somebody that does. Um, so anyway, if you're on YouTube and watching our recordings over here from Ustream and you have something you want to see or talk about or want done, just leave me a comment. I do read my YouTube comments twice a day, every morning and every night. So I, I at least hit a like button if you've commented. I try to, I mean, once in a while YouTube will mess up and the comments like get kind of lost, but that doesn't happen very often. I try to at least hit the like button if you've commented. If you ask a question, I will definitely answer it as long as I see it. Again, sometimes a few comments get lost, uh, but I do answer any questions you ask. So, um, yeah. So there we go, guys. And yes, I do love Trippy, even though it's kind of making a, a it's, he's not focusing right now because I don't have it set for, you know, locked in there. But yeah. So anybody here have any questions before we go? Um, yeah, Jean, I have to put this, this goes in the book today. Orange Sky at Night, Dragon's Delight, Orange Sky in Morning, Dragon Take Warning from the previous, that's got to go in the, uh, Wing that book. <laughs> so, oh, wait, I got to show you this real quick because, you know, grandmother's prerogative. I have found this. I had this forever. I don't even remember where I got it. I can't remember. Somebody gifted it to me or what, but it's the Tag Mag. It's, what is it? Let me see again. Let me look inside. It's called Take a Peek at My, it's, that's what it is, Tap at Mag. Take a Peek at My Adorable Grandchildren. I had this in a bag. And I found it in a bag, and it's some old pictures of Cam and Boo and Logan. So, yeah. So, let me show you. These are probably, he was probably 12 here. He's 17 now. So, yeah. So, some early pictures of Boo. Yeah, there's Cam. He was probably maybe 13 there. There they are on the beach. There's, um, that's Cam, but Boo and Cam both ride. They're at the beach there. So there's Denise and Cam and Boo. I think we're in Savannah. And then on the other side, these are even older. There's Cam at about 11 or 12. Boo. Boo was probably about 7. Logan was about 4. And then there's Boo and Cam. Ah, yeah, I just had to show that off because it's sitting on my desk. Thanks, guys. But I love this little vintage, you know, it's, it's an actual vintage little, you know, case. It's so cute. Tap at Mag. Take a peek at my adorable grandchildren. I know. Okay, guys. Well, I will let you go. I will see you. Uh, I probably won't be at Paula's, but I will always watch Paula early Sunday morning. And I will see you guys Monday. Um, my regular 9 a.m. Eastern time on Ustream. And if you're watching the recording, feel free to come over to Ustream and hang out at the chat. It's free. You do have to watch ads during the show. I mean, ads pop up during the show. Um, we are not ad-free. You can, you know, I know there's ad programs you can get to ad block and all that, but I don't ad block or anything like that, especially since I do YouTube and 
I want to support all the people that do record, you know, videos on YouTube. So, you know, I hope y'all will watch my ads too on YouTube. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? Watch my ads on YouTube. <laughs> okay, guys. So I've had so much fun. I hope y'all enjoyed the full on day Saturday. And uh, I'll upload these to YouTube. It'll probably take me a little bit now because this is we've, we've done hours of them. So, yeah, see you on the tweets. Yeah. Okay, guys, y'all have a great weekend. Bye-bye.